Coop Starius left training early yesterday. How is he? Yeah, I think he's um, absolutely fine. I think it was just a precaution. It was um, a bit cold training yesterday for the first time in Canberra, so maybe it was a bit cold in our uh, hamstrings. But uh, no, he's absolutely fine. He's getting treatment and there's no issue whatsoever. He'll be uh, lined up in the number one jersey on Friday night. JT looked good as well. Yeah, he, he went through a rigorous sort of test. Um, and again, um, yeah, he pulled up fine. Um, he'll have around the clock treatment but it's only just to keep him prepared and in the tip top shape so um, yeah, having the Cowboys um, medical staff here on board I think that helps too so you know, while you see yesterday him doing a lot of work I think he's been doing that for a number of weeks now so um, again I think he'll be lining up in the number 6 jersey, no issues That's really huge for JT given it's his last season in representative Yeah it is um, you know, he's probably having a few Farewells and swan songs this year in the representative arena, so you can say this will be his last Anzac test. And yeah, rightly so. He's wanted to you know, get his body right and make the right decision. But Jonathan Thurston's not a selfish player by no means. Yeah, you know, he wouldn't be playing this game if he didn't think he can contribute. Um, and yeah, you know, he will on Friday night. So I think he's done everything possible. He's ticked all the boxes. Um, and Mal Meninga and the senior playing group have a lot of faith in Jonathan. So um, yeah, you know, if he says he's right to go. Um, he'll be getting his uh, swan song in his last Anzac test here in Canberra. Have you thought about it, the fact that it could be your last year in Rep? Uh Yeah, I suppose it could be, but um, I haven't really thought about um, you know, being in Canberra, this being my last test. I'm, I'm more thinking about um, yeah, do I want to play on or, or not. So uh, I haven't really had those thoughts. Um, I, I suppose in hindsight it po might possibly could be, but um, you know, I think um, there's a few other things to focus on in terms of this week, in terms of preparation. Um, this year has the potential to be a, a massive year for the, the Kangaroos. Um, you know, I thought we made some really good um, steps in the right directions in the Four Nations campaign last year under Mal. Um, and while that we set the standard then, that's the expectation going forward for 2017. So there's this Anzac test obviously on Friday night and then the World Cup campaign. So um, you know, looking forward to it. Hopefully we can um, raise the bar again and play to another level and um, let's hope 2017 could be um, a really promising year for the, the Kangaroos. I suppose a lot of people want to know sort of where you're at the, at the moment with your future. What are you thinking, playing on, not play on? Or? Well, it's funny, I've had these questions a lot in the last couple of days <laughs> and the answer's basically the same. I enjoy playing rugby league, it, it's great, but um, on the other hand, I've been so fortunate after the career I have. So um, the decision had to be made around Melbourne Storm out of respect for Melbourne Storm, obviously with the play transfer market, there's a lot going on and if I had left my decision later on the year, they would have been in a difficult position. So the first decision was, will I go take up that option and the answer is no for that. Um, and it was a tough and emotional one, but the next decision around, will I play on or, or not, won't be made for a period of time. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information. I'm not the type of player that just makes decisions off the cuff. I, I like to think them through and um, have a preparation, the information in front of me. So um, in due course, I, I guarantee you, I'll let you know, but that time's not for a while, trust me. It's a bit of talk this morning that uh, Melbourne are talking with Anthony Milford as a possible replacement. What do you make of that? Um, yeah, I, I suppose they have every right to speak to whoever they want. Um, again, I hope I'm not talking out of school here, but for the first time in a, in a while, I suppose Melbourne's got some, some, some money to spend on the salary cap and... Um, yeah, I'm not privy to those conversations. Um, should, probably should be asking Craig Bellamy or, or Cameron Smith those ones. But yeah, look, um, yeah, whoever you know they've been linked to, the, the Melbourne Storm are a smart football club. They'll, they'll make smart decisions about their future, and um, they'll leave no stone unturned in terms of making that right one. And whoever is that player, I'm sure they're going to go into a very good side with a good system, great players, great culture, great coach. And if they ever need a insight to it, I'm happy to place a phone call. Is it hard to some days do you sort of feel you're thinking, OK, you know, this is it, I'll, I'll retire after this, and then other days you're like, oh, no, I definitely want to play on? Oh, I, I haven't really had that 50-50 thought. For me, I'm really comfortable with it. I'm, I'm truly peaceful with the decision I've made. Melbourne's been great to me, but, you know, it's time to put someone else and something else first, and I, I'm looking forward. I've been really enjoying the last couple of weeks since the, the announcement. While it was a tough and emotional one, um, it's the right one, and, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry I don't have any answers to stop the conspiracy theories, but um, until that time, you guys have every right to talk about it because I don't have any answers for you. Cooper, what about this test match on Friday night? What do you make of this Kiwi side? Is it one of the most formidable that they've put together for some time? Yeah, it is. And that's no disrespect to the teams before, but you think about their forward pack, um, you know, Blair, Bromwich, Tomalolo, uh, Packer, Tapao, 
Um, running off the back of that, you got Isaac Luke, Sean Johnson, Four, and Tuvasa Shek. And they're big names in the NRL and they represent the Kiwis. So um, the best thing about International Rugby League these days is I think it's taken a step. I think it's taken a step in the right direction in terms of you know, not only the standard of play, but the players um, you know, allow themselves to be picked for Samoa and the other Pacific Islanders too, and England are out too. So this test, is, is it's a big one. Yeah, it is. Um, World Cup at the end of the year. Um, the Kiwis probably weren't completely happy with their performance in the Four Nations. Um, we were. We were happy with it, the way that we played, so we need to take some strides and continue with that form. And you know, no, no better place to you know, play in Canberra on a Friday night. It's probably going to be freezing cold. And um, we're going to sing the national anthems. We're going to stand in front of the Harker and uh, let's play football. Tonight you go. Oh, you go. What about for your great friend Cameron Smith in his 50th test match for Australia? From a player's point of view, can you put that... In context, um, I got to put that in context. Well, don't quote me on the numbers, but I'm I'm sure the average NRL career is about 40 odd games. Cameron Smith's playing 50 for his country. Um, yeah, he's been doing what a number of guys would love to do at, at the NRL level. He's been doing that at a national level and international level for you know 10 plus years. Um, there's not enough superlatives to describe Cameron Smith, the man and the player. Um, but one thing, you know, the biggest rap I can give Cameron Smith is um, you know, over 300 games for Melbourne, you know, 40 odd State of Origin games and 50 tests. I don't think he's ever let anyone down. Um, he's reliable, he's consistent, he's tough, he's durable, and he's been doing that for a long time. And he's been doing that for almost 50 tests for Australia. So on Friday night, I think it's only fitting that we are tough, reliable, consistent, and durable for him for 80 minutes on Friday night. So. Um, yeah, it's a special milestone. Only one other player has achieved it, um, and he's arguably, you know, the next immortal in, in line. So um, it's sometimes, um, yeah, Cameron will play it down, and you know, every rider will have his family and friends and close support in the grandstand because it is a massive achievement. And yeah, you know, some days we'll look back past when all our careers are finished, and you can say that you played in that 50th Test match, which is pretty special. Tonight you guys will visit the War Memorial. You've obviously done it before. How special is that? Yeah, it is. Um, I don't have any direct connections to um, service men or women in my family, but you know, being fortunate enough to play, uh, respectful enough to play in the Anzac Tests, uh, the Anzac Day Games, sometimes you play a game of football and it's bigger than the scoreboard. And when you visit the War Memorial and you, you walk in with a heavy heart and a lot of respect and admiration and gratitude for what people have done before us, um, you know, you've got to go out there and play with that respect and show that spirit that those people have and still do today overseas. So um, it, it's special. It's hard to put into words. Um, you never want to compare, you know, sport and war on any level because, you know, we're not going to pay the ultimate sacrifice. But as long as we can play the game with the utmost respect, play it in the right spirit, play with, you know, a lot of resilience and passion, like, men and women have done before us and are still doing today, I think that's a fitting way to play the game. Chris, what's the focus on Kieran Foran coming back to, for the Kiwis? Can I get your thoughts on his impact on Sean Johnson? And obviously, you've played a lot of games with, with JT. Um, what does Kieran do for, for Sean? Um, yeah, from a technical point of view, I think he, he brings a lot. Um, you know, from a football purist point of view, he basically straightens the attack up and allows Johnson to play his natural, you know, quick energy across the field with his footwork um, to play sort of out the back of shape a lot more. Um, Kieran Foran plays direct, he plays tough, he's courageous, he goes into the line, so that doesn't definitely helps the players around him. Um, from a support point of view, I'm not too sure, I, you know, I assume they're close mates from playing a lot of football together, so when you're in a good headspace and you're playing with your best mates, I suppose it does bring uh, benefit, but... Um, Unfortunately for them and unfortunately for us, you know, there's an opposition that's going to try and stop them from doing their best and vice versa with Jonathan and I on Friday night. So that's what international football is all about. It's about testing the best players against one another and both mentally and physically you're going to be tested throughout the 80 minutes and you know, um, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But that, that's what's on, um, up for grabs on Friday night. I'm going to get you on, on Brodie Croft as well. I understand he's, he's captain of the team with Kangaroos. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Brady's obviously a good kid. Um, There's a lot of talk uh, around him, considering you know, my decision in recent times, and rightly so. Um, yeah, I don't like putting people's names at that age in up in highlights because you know, it just brings too much added pressure. But 
the one thing I can say is Brodie Croft, um, at the age that he is, I think he's 20 or 19 or something like that. Um, at my age, he's streets ahead of where I was at that age. So, um, yeah, he's, he's a good kid. He's got great work ethic. He's got skills that um, will make him play first grade for a long time, but he needs to be the person he needs to do to um, make that happen. And um, I'm not the one that determines that. He's the one that determines that. But in terms of him being representing and the captain of the Junior Kangaroos, along with Curtis Scott, Scott another player at Melbourne Storm, I wish them very well. See them tonight. Um, if they ever need any advice, I'm more than happy to help them out.